Mary Hannah Fromm was born Mary Hannah Hansen in 1927 on her parents' ranch on Divide Creek near Rifle. In this interview recorded in November of 2012, Mary Hannah describes her childhood and life on Divide Creek in the 1930s. Where did your people come from originally? Like, what country? My mother's family came from England on the Mayflower, or about that time. Um, my dad's family came from Norway into Wisconsin. My mother's family came in to New York. and But mother came here when she was 12 years old. Her mother, my grandmother, who owned this house, not at that time, but later on, had, they thought she had TB, I don't know if she did. She came here for her health, and my grandfather had come ahead. But my mother and her sister came out here on the train when they were 12 years old, alone. What year were you born? Do you mind 1927. telling? 1927. I don't care. January 23rd, 1927. Just before things, well, things were starting to sort of unravel even then. Pretty they? much, yeah. And I was born out on the ranch. The doctor came out from town and and went rabbit hunting while he waited for my mom to get around to the final hours. And <laughs> <laughs> he wiled away the time by came, rabbit hunting? Came back to town, and, and, and the story goes, it's another one of those things that I hear, but heard of the story, but I don't remember is that he came to town and he failed to have my birth recorded. So later on, when I wanted to get a birth certificate, I had to go through the process of getting a delayed one. Really? So you, there wasn't record of you having been born? No, no. I could have been named any. I could have named myself anything at that point. <laughs> 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 but my mother wouldn't allow that. Of she was still not. alive, and she could swear, you know, she could sign an affidavit, and I had to have three or four proofs of who I am and where I was born and when and all that stuff. And it was, it took me quite a while to get a delayed birth certificate so I could get a social security card and all that stuff. You didn't need it, need it for a driver's license in those days. So was, was uh, life in western Colorado hard for your your mother and father? In on today's standard, you'd say it was hard. Um, they worked hard. They didn't have much. Um, my grandfather came to, to Divide Creek in 1905 and homesteaded, and he had a 160-acre place. And then, and my dad was 10 years old at that time. And then my mother came one later, and met my dad and they were they were married when my mother was 19 and my dad was 24. He was 5 years older than my mother. In in 1927 No, that was the year I was born. It had to be before that. 1926. They bought 160 acres that was 2 2 miles on up the road from where my grandfather had his place. So, and when mother and dad moved into it, it was a three-bedroom house with with the not very good shape. My mother said when she tried to clean the kitchen floor, the water froze on the floor. She had three little boys by then. Really? So when she tried to they mop were the, like, the water? They were like two, four, and six when they moved into there. And then I came along a little bit later, because I'm almost three years younger than the than the next brother. But I had these three brothers, yeah. And the, there wasn't a complete window in the house, and it was January. It was cold, so they my dad fixed it, you know, the best he could. And they had a coal stove, of course, but mostly wood. They burned more wood than coal. Later on, they burned coal. And, and managed to get through those first few years. And, and then, you know, as they went on, things got better. But, uh, yeah, it was a tough life. We worked hard. We always had food because they raised their own. And as soon as they got established, 
we had a always a big garden, and Mother canned a lot of stuff, and I helped her can. I still can. I can't help it. <laughs> <laughs> of course you can. <laughs> I can. <laughs> you know, it's one of those things you just you want to do. And so she worked the big garden, and Dad had, uh, he was a beef. He raised beef and ran them on the mountain in the summertime. And, and But there was, there was no money. We didn't have any money. I don't think anybody had any money Nobody then, had did any they? money, but we... We you didn't need as much either, cause but you could come to town and you could buy an ice cream cone for a nickel, if you had a nickel, but sometimes you didn't have the nickel. We we worked hard. I worked in the field. I, as soon as I was old enough, I worked a team in the field. They were we didn't have tractors. We had teams of horses, and I worked did right in the field with the guys. But as soon as I was big enough to drive a team, what would you do? Well, when I was, oh, probably 14, 15, my main task was to run the sulky rake. Explain the, what that is. You know, the, the hay rake, when we'd, because Dad, Dad raised hay and grain and potatoes. I hated picking potatoes. He had a big orchard, so we had a lot of apples. We would pick apples, and Dad was, well, I don't think my dad ever picked an apple. <laughs> he'd get the neighbors to come because some of them didn't have them. We had a big cellar too, and he would have the neighbors come and pick on shares. So they picked a bushel, they got a bushel, he got a bushel to put in the cellar. I don't think he ever picked the apple. I like the maybe, way he thinks. Except maybe one to eat for himself. Well, he had neighbors and he had kids. Neighbors for that, and didn't kids, he? And, yeah, so. and then we'd put the we'd. Put a whole bunch of apples in the back end of one of the pickups, and you know the pickups. You can imagine then what a pickup truck was like. wasn't quite like we had now. And go over to the other neighbor who had a cider press, and make apple cider out of a bunch of those apples, and and share them with the whole neighborhood. And, you know, it was the neighbors all worked together. We were all we did, we didn't have much fussing among the neighbors. So was there a particular hard time in the 30s that you remember as a family? I mean, being on a farm really did insulate you in a way from It some did. Of- uh it uh, I remember one of the things that it wasn't you know, as I say, we always had food cuz we raised it. We had people from town who came out and our friends and I'm I'm sure that a lot of them came because they always got a good meal at our house. And we, my parents never turned anybody away that we needed help like that. You know, they did, well, come on out and we'll do something. Dad would, we, he would butcher a pig and he would take half of it to town and trade it for sugar and coffee and cigarettes because they both and the other one he would put down in the brine in the cellar and then do that because there was no there was no money to buy anything. But so he would tra- he'd basically trade he trade his goods for things yeah, that he needed for things that he needed. And the cash crop we had was cream from the six cows he milked in the winter time, and he'd save the cream and bring it the five-gallon can of cream to town and sell it, and that was cash money. And eggs from the hens, and mother would bring them and sell them at the grocery store. And that's how they kept their grocery bill paid up for the things they had to buy. And then dad would bring a load of grain to the granary that was down here on 2nd Street at that time to the mill, and he'd trade his wheat for a bag of flour that was already done. And so there was no... You know, cash money just didn't exist. They ran entirely on borrowed money at the bank. That you know, I, I was such a kid. I don't remember how much or any terms like that. But I know he would sell the cattle in the fall and go. Then he'd have to mom and go to the bank, and it must have been a line of credit. I suppose was what you'd call it now. And you know, and they'd pay off what they could. And they ultimately paid that place off, though, when they sold it in 1963, I think, something like that. They It was all paid off years before that. The, my brother 
was in the service, my second brother, George. And he died with an accident on the farm, on the ranch, actually, not in the military. But he had military insurance, and they got his insurance because they were he wasn't married. And that was the first time they ever had an extra dime to do anything. At Christmas, we didn't get toys. We got clothes. I had one, one, Growing up, I had one pair of shoes. One pair of shoes. Really? I got the whole, a new... The whole time you... All, no, at the, one at a time. Right. But one, it wasn't like you went to the closet and there was no, a selection. No, there was a pair of shoes on my feet. I When school started in the fall, I got two new outfits to wear to school and a new pair of shoes and a big chief tablet and two pencils. And For that, the year. Till Christmas. Oh, till Christmas. Till Christmas. About as kids grow, about Christmas time, see, the clothes were too small and the shoes were too small and the tablet was pretty shot. We used both sides of the paper. That's all the paper you got to do all your schoolwork on. One big, they were about that thick in ordinary, you know. Right. Because there was no money to buy that stuff. And, uh, so then I would get another pair of shoes, and they had to last me then. And in the summertime, I mostly went barefooted and saved my shoes so I could go to town and have a pair of shoes when I went to town, which I didn't like to do because I got car sick and I didn't want to go to town anyway. <laughs> <laughs> so, you know, and I had, I had two two sets of clothes to wear to school. You got home from school, you immediately went and changed your clothes because we wore them for the whole week. You put that same set of clothes on the next day to go to school. By Friday, all of us looked a little grubby because everybody, you know, you didn't think anything of it because everybody did the same thing. So you changed your clothes and went, and most of my everyday clothes and my doing the chores clothes and my doing the chores consisted of feeding the chickens and gathering the eggs and sometimes feeding the pigs and horses and that sort of thing, was my older brother's worn-out jeans. I, I remember when I got the first pair of jeans that were my own jeans that didn't have a hole in them or a patch. <laughs> that, you know, but I don't remember it as being, at the time, as you look back on it, if you had to do that now, you'd think you were pretty, you know, it was pretty hard on you. But at the time... You know, I didn't think anything of it. I just did that. So did you, back then, Did was there the sense that you had to hold on to your money because any, anything could happen? Well, I think my parents were. I think they were concerned that, you know, that it was hard to get enough to have the things that they wanted us to have. We had a radio. It was run off of a battery. And, you know, we saved the battery. We didn't listen to the radio. That was for Mom and Dad to listen to the news. It didn't, for, for entertainment, we played cards and checkers and dominoes. And you didn't, it didn't cost any money. Everything costs money nowadays. You can't hardly turn around without paying a fee for something. And, and that bothers me still some. I have a hard time, under, you know, I understand, but I it, it seems kind of strange that everything you do costs money. That was Mary Hannah Hansen from. To learn more about life on Divide Creek in the 1930s, please consult Part 2 and Part 3 of this interview, also on this website.